Welcome to the Air Power Airwaves, the Air Power Manufacturing Solutions podcast series where we talk about manufacturing issues that impact you. Hey, this is Travis Steerwalt with another episode of Air Power Airwaves podcast. Welcome, glad you're with us, and guess what? For those of you watching this on the YouTube channel, you notice something different. Yeah, we still got the cool red and black checkers back here, Uh, but we are actually now in our fourth location of filming this podcast, but it is now our permanent location in the Air Power Live studio in the corporate office, the main building, brand new room for marketing and uh we're going to be showing this room off here shortly. There's, uh, it's quite a big space. We've got some cool things to show you. But today, we're getting down to podcast time again. And I have some great guys with me here today. Uh, I'm going to introduce first TJ McNeely. Yes, sir. Travis Steerwalt and TJ you. in the same room. I, I think we're going to be able to talk. Yes, sir. Because you're not quiet. I'm not quiet. No, I do not like in that, that area. <laughs> So, TJ, you're the business development manager for Prevost. Yes, sir. And uh, we'll get into that in just a moment. I'm going to turn over here to Rusty Clinton. Rusty, how are you? Good, sir. Good. I've known Rusty for a long time. He and I work together on projects, uh, filter projects, all kinds of things. And uh, Rusty is an account manager with Air Power based out of the Charlotte area and actually he actually has uh, key accounts that he deals with in that in the Charlotte market. That's right. I handle the Boston Gears, Connets, Meritors, Daimlers, uh, about 15 of the largest accounts in and around Charlotte. Gotcha. All right, cool. So that being said, let's do a couple little real basics here. Um, if you have any questions on anything you hear or see in this podcast, uh, 1-800-334-1001. Uh, three websites that you need to know. First, we'll just start out with the Air Power website. The official Air Power website is airpower-usa.com. Uh, and actually, I'm going to add a number four here because we just launched the web store. So I'm going to put a little plug in for the web store here. And that is shop.airpower dash usa.com I'm going to get a head nod to make sure that that was the correct address from uh, our, our marketing manager back there yeah we got it okay um, I did it right okay so the next two airpower airwaves.com is the home of the podcast and then all things uh, video and audio would be airpowerlive.com and uh, let's not forget social media. We had a little discussion about social media and our uh, our kids earlier and our spouses. And uh, everybody uses it a little differently, and we realize yeah. that, so we're all over the place. So you can find us at our number one location, all social media, is the Air Power YouTube channel. Check us out there. Tons of videos. If this is your first time and you happen across this audio version of the podcast or you're happening across uh, YouTube from a search, which is quite possible, um, you are going to want to go to Air Power Manufacturing Solutions. Uh, And that's from filters to pumps to uh, tools to uh, pro dispense, you know, uh, uh, precision dispensing, whatever. Uh, It's all there. But YouTube channel is the place to go. Uh, for a serious education from Air Power Online. Uh, Others, LinkedIn, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Twitter, and... uh, Are you on Snapchat yet? Do what? We are not on... Okay, good. We are not on Snapchat. However, however, (laughs) I do want to put something out there. If you think that we should create funny videos and put them on TikTok, go down in the comments of this video... (laughs) And you let me know, because we had a discussion about that earlier, because we're all married and we have kids, and we know that all of them just love 
love TikTok. If you want to see Travis TikTok, let us know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, but you guys, I'm going to call you out on TikTok. Okay. okay. So you'll have to reciprocate. My, my, my kids will see it. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, they're talking about you That's on right. TikTok. Unfortunately, right. I might. I might it's I might. not good. <laughs> Unfortunately, I might. I might not already have a good bit of information on there already. So. You know, uh, actually, both of my, both of my, I've got four boys actually, and between my wife and I, we have four adult sons, and they show me stuff on TikTok all the time. And one of my sons actually started to zero in, and he's like, Dad, there's tons of stuff on powder coating and plating and anodizing. You know, there's all kinds of stuff that people are doing and uh, on TikTok that's educational, and it's just quick, short. So, you know, maybe hey, there might be a space for us there. Let me know. Okay. I'm going to drop that 1-800 number again, 800-334-1001 before we roll into this. All right, today it's all things Prevost. Sweet. And I think you're wearing, you're, you must be that guy. I've got that new shirt on. Okay, so Prevost and Air Power. Uh, I remember, man, I've been with Air Power just shy of nine years right now. And I remember it was a number of years ago that I happened to be. Uh, uh, working on a project at the Chattanooga office in Tennessee and one of the guys from Prevost happened to stop in and he was just doing kind of an impromptu training with several of the guys so I sat in and I was quite impressed and you got to remember I mean my you know I, I do have a, a fair bit of knowledge about compressed air and moving moving air through a plant um, grew up in the cabinet shop where that was fairly limited but we did have it uh, very rudimentary, but uh, then being involved in powder coating for uh, a decade prior to coming to Air Power, you know, where I my job with that was selling powder, but what goes with that is troubleshooting. Absolutely. And then the number of times that I found oil, water, that was one of the first things we would check when you have distortion of, of the powder on the surface oh, after yeah. cure. You know, take that, take that white rag. I just had this here. Take a white paper towel or a white rag and fold it up. Get that compressed air source. Get the, put it right in there, and then spray it. And I mean, it was ungodly what yeah. you would find sometimes. So, the I just want to say going into this that I realized the importance of this topic. And when you when you were interested in in doing a podcast, I was Absolutely. all over it. So, um, and also in talking to you, you have, you know, several account managers you work with, you know, that you have a relationship with because you've worked on numerous projects. And one of those was Eddie Rhodes that yeah. just came up really quick. And then Rusty. And uh, I've had Eddie Rhodes on podcasts, love doing Eddie Rhodes, love, love, love having him on videos. And uh, I really wanted Rusty in on this one too because... I waved the white flag. He <laughs> did, man. He was like, okay, I'll do it. I'll do it. Right. Um, so, let's talk about the history of compressed air. Let's go back okay. and start, for those that don't know, we don't need to spend a ton of time on it, but um, what is the background of compressed air? When did compressed air start being used? Like, when? Well, I mean, you know, I tried to research this topic a pretty good bit at it's hard to really pinpoint it. It's been used since the early 1900s in the 19th century, um, actually in the 1800s. Um, over in Europe, I think a lot of compressed air was, was developed through um, steam compression. Right. Um, you know, I mean, I would say the first um, compressed air vessel was our lungs. The Lord made, made it the first one. Uh, but it's been around for, it's been around in all sorts of different forms for a long time. Um, and it's been a critical fluid power for a long time, even though it's not really considered that often. Um, you know, but trying to figure out where the first compressor was created, it's been it's it's been a while. Um, okay, you know, it kind of it kind of goes back to the fact that you know there's there's so many different fo energy forms that are out there, and people don't really realize how critical of a fluid power that compressed air is, and how big of a part that it plays. It often gets overlooked, um, and it gets kind of downplayed. I wouldn't say that it gets downplayed, but it's you know a bad comparison that I've used a few times is 
compressed air is, is often like um, blood pressure or cholesterol. You don't really pay a whole lot of attention until it's in a bad situation. Yeah. And at that point, it's probably already caused other problems throughout your system, and then you got to get it fixed. <laughs> yeah. So it's very much the lungs of, of a facility. That's a very good absolutely because you know it's kind of an afterthought. Yeah. Well, we talked until about you're choking. That's right. Yeah, that's right. That's you've right. Got, you've got a problem, and then people turn to figure out why. Yeah. Right. But well, we, it's we been talk a about for a long time. We talk about the cost of compressed air, and I know we're going to get into that, but. Man, my body, it's priceless. <laughs> dude, <laughs> you know, yeah, dude, yeah. it's its its life. It's yeah. vital to the operation. <clears throat> so that's, right. uh, that's a good way to think about it, moving into this conversation. Um, so evolution of compressed air. Um, those that don't know, we try to follow, you know, a good outline when we go through a podcast, but going down rabbit holes is, is welcome. Um, and we keep an outline so we can kind of keep the subject matter straight and we can come back to it. So if not, we'll be talking to about try to cover things. <laughs> yeah. um, let's talk about the evolution of compressed air, really. And uh, so the original installers of yeah. compressed air, who would have been the one that, that they called to go in and put in so, compressed air? And feel free to use some sort of a, uh, an analogy or example. Gotcha. So, I've only been in the business for about a year and a half. Um, I started with Prevost a, a year ago. I moved into this new role. Um, but what I've learned is that for years, compressed air, when it originally kind of became a fluid power and, and used for situations, it was installed by plumbers. And I mean, if you think about it, that's the right route to take it. Because, I mean, again, it's it's handled through pipes. Who's the best with piping? It's plumbers, pipe fitters. Brass. Um, that's uh, exactly right. Copper, you know? galvanized, whatever. I mean, those are the experts when it comes to pipe fitting. So they're and and to this day, plumbers are still either plumbers or mechanical contractors are often still the ones who are doing a lot of installation, which again totally makes sense. Um, you know, but unfortunately, or excuse me, fortunately, a lot of things have changed and technology has improved drastically over the years and. Now that we have a little bit more of an understanding about the quality and the importance of a quality installed system, not just the installation, but the material that you're using, you know, a lot of the things have changed. And, um, you know, sometimes it's hard to get um, a plumber to change his mind. You know, he's a master pipe fitter. He's been threading and cutting pipe for 35, 40 years. He knows what he's doing and he's darn good at it. Um, but unfortunately, a lot of the material that's there in the past is 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 we've learned now that is is not the choice and not the best choice to use. You yeah. Know? You know, we've got, we, we wrote down these three examples of, of what's out there right now. Black iron, yeah. galvanized pipe, or what what was original used. Yeah. The black iron, the galvanized pipe, and then PVC. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know? Yeah. And uh, so, I've seen, in my career, I've seen PVC. Yeah. In an operation. Now this is a while back, but I'm not. I'm not a spring chicken, young dude. It, it still exists, but it's surprisingly. And uh, I, I want to touch on black iron and galvanized, and I also want to touch to those people who see PVC used and and why we have written down here no no. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. So let's cover black iron and galvanized pipe a little bit. Talk about the acceptance in the market and how why yeah. they were used so prevalently. So, so black iron obviously was, it's always been one of the more readily available materials, especially for a plumber. You know, they can go to these large plumbing, you know, just supply houses and easily get the product. And a lot of compressed air that was installed, obviously was being done by them, but it's ease of operation for those guys. They know how much they need. They can run 10 minutes down the road to whatever pipe supplier and get exactly what they need. Um, the problem with it is, is, all of the problems that it brings, you know? Um, and, and we'll continue to touch on air quality, but like, if your air is not clean, galvanized and black iron can cause exponential more problems. You know, there's corrosion. There's multiple places for possible um, leaks. Yeah. Um, and the problem with it is, is, it's not just corrosion and leaks. I mean, all of these things have a domino effect on what happens, you know? So if you have corrosion and moisture in your system because you're not filtering it, 
or if you have corrosion because you have moisture in your system, every bit of that's going to every single tool and every single piece of equipment that's hooked up. So people think, ah, oh, well, it's just moisture. We've got some leaks, but we're still running. Well, guess what? Oh, we know that, that $150,000 lathe or CNC machine is being filled with moisture, yep. is being filled with dust and corrosion. So guess what? It's supposed to not be main, maintenance and once every year, once every two years. Now you've got to shut it down every two or three months and clean it. And it's just, it's compounding costs that people don't really think about. And it's all because of the specific material that we compressed air started with. And, you know, there's no wrong thing with it. It's still being installed today. Um, it's, it's, it's still installed every day and Rusty loses opportunities. We lose opportunities every day because end users want the cheapest, most cost effective thing and they, they still want to put that in. Yeah, they don't understand the back end. I've seen, you know, older facilities install new automation robots and things and then constantly have to replace parts that are tens of thousands of dollars yeah. because of inadequate air quality feeding a modern operation. Yeah. Yes, the compressed air has been there for decades, right? And it's an afterthought that no one thought when they installed the robot to upgrade their air to prevent it's like, downtime. It's like there's a missing piece of the puzzle in an organization internally where you've got purchasing involved and you've got the person who's going to cut the PO involved and they just see that cost savings initially and they don't know the connection. No. You know, there there's no relevant connection in their mind. They're like, oh, well, just do it that way then. Well, no one thinks this. Oh, there's air. Let's just plug it in. That's right. Regardless of what is there. That's right. The impact that may have on that new piece of equipment. Well, well, oftentimes you have to you have to find the right person, you know, because a production manager in a production shop where you've got six machines and let's say ten guns going, all he's looking at is his production quota that he's got to get done during the day. Yeah. And if all of those tools are working and all those guys are doing Keep something, running. That's fine. He's not worried about it. He doesn't care about that hidden cost. Now the maintenance manager that comes in might realize, hey, we're having a problem with production or we're having to service this machine quicker, then that comes up. So it's, it's to your point, it's critical in getting in front of the right person to bring this topic up that, that is open-minded enough to see that, you know? Like all those stars have to align. That's it, absolutely. Sure everybody is yeah, on the same Yeah, page. exactly. And, and a lot of times, I mean, I know you're thorough. I've worked with you on accounts. As an account manager for Air Power, you are you are very thorough, and you're able to kind of bridge those gaps sometimes with your expertise, communication, being able to bring everybody into the same room and go, "Hey, everybody needs to understand this." Yeah. And well, going back to TJ's point, right? The production manager is looking at production productivity, but downtime plays a major role in his productivity. Where the maintenance guy is specifically looking at downtime. And what his maintenance guys have to maintain, That's prevent, exactly right. preventative maintenance yep. or repair or replace. So if you get those guys both in the same room, they understand that while they're not doing the same job, they are yep. tied 100%. together. They, they, it impacts both of them. So then yep. you can it can be eye opening. Yep, very so, much so. so. And you know, in, in in my world, in powder for so many years, you know, every there there were people that sold to purchasing agents, and there were people that sold to production people or or spec you know way up way higher in the food chain um, but you had to get those people together in order to be able to actually get everybody on the same knowledge level and then it was much easier oh okay, okay we yeah, get it now that's right this this powder that was three dollars a pound uh, that we've been buying your powder at four dollars a pound actually saves us a lot of money because we get twice as much out of that powder than you know square footage that we do the three. So, right. no brainer. Let's go. That's right. So yeah. same I mean, thing. This, this is not about selling pipe. It's about providing a solution and Correct. preventing problems down the road. Absolutely program. correct. So let's talk about that PVC no no. I mean, it's, it is pretty much an OSHA violation, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. So the, one of the first walkthroughs that I ever did when I started with the company. This has been back like in April of last year, was a was a uh, furniture manufacturer or a cabinet manufacturer, and he had PVC through the system. That's usually where you see it. That's right. Tight facilities. Well, in a situation, it was a, you, you could tell when I walked in. So y y you walk in, and it's a building that he's purchased, and he's just, he's basically purchased it off of square footage because he knows that's how much he needs to get his equipment. His equipment's scattered everywhere. There's dust everywhere. 
And, you know, he got pretty creative when they designed the system. So it obviously tells you that he or one of his partners put put the system in and they did it the cheapest way. Mm-hmm. But you and I know that, I mean, glue and epoxy on fittings is is not your solution Correct. for compressed air maintenance. And you can hardly hear yourself talk in that facility because of all the leaks. Every elbow, every 90, every T had a pitted corner where it was literally you could feel it. I mean, and he was running... Just to give you a quick example, he was running off a seven or seven and a half horsepower compressor, and I bet he was losing seventy percent of wasted energy in that facility. Wow. But but he had his machines were running, and he wasn't really thinking about. It. He just knew that he needed to replace it. I mean that's just exponential money. You know, the thing that always concerns me when I see PVC is I would challenge anyone to hit a PVC fitting with a hammer. Watch what happens to it. Watch the sharp shards. The, the fragments that come off of it. If yeah. a compressed air PVC system explodes, you could really, really hurt someone or potentially kill someone. 100%. Yeah. It's very dangerous. You might want to put that, you know, armor on before you... Yeah. Make sure your safety devices are on. That's right. <laughs> if you're working around PVC compressed air, it's very dangerous. It's still out there. It is. Like you said, it it's out there. Chainmail. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shark Week in Plant 2. <laughs> it would be uh, <laughs> Okay, um, so let's discuss. We, we know the PVCs that don't know, and, and if you're if you're watching this and you happen to see it in your plant, I would have that conversation with somebody. You know, you, you guys need to address that. Uh, when we go into plants, we're not looking to go and, and you know pick up a phone and call OSHA and narc on somebody, but we will be very upfront and blunt with you. I know most of our account managers would have that conversation yes. with you. To bring you up to speed, um, let's talk. So we talked about the impact of like black iron and galvanized, and you know how they, the the moisture. You know, we got moisture, rust, whatever is building up. You got dirty, wet, nasty yeah. air yeah. coming through there. Um, you know, uh, something we did not mention is just the the factor of of the weight. Of, yeah. of that when you're installing that. The, yeah. The weight of it, the impact of it when you're putting it together. Yeah. So, and, and we have some documentation that we use often. And there's no quick fittings. There's it's all old school. It is. It is. And, you know, three, four years ago, galvanized and black iron was a good bit cheaper than extruded aluminum, what Prevost does. A um, year ago, year and a half ago, wasn't the case. We were actually, the cost of material had went up so much on that stuff that we were actually competitive, if not a little bit cheaper. Now, material costs have changed a little bit now, but material cost should be, when you're looking at a solution, is one of the least things. Because obviously that material was much heavier than what we do. Um, installation time of our product and extruded aluminum is a quarter of the time. So if you're putting a now that's a huge impact. Well, labor. Well, here's the thing, and what we also find out is when it comes to pipe fitting and maintenance and labor, the cost of material versus the whole cost of a project, which is maintenance and labor, product plus maintenance and labor, the material itself is only about a third of the third of it. So in a, a situation where you're quoting a project for ten thousand dollars, you're going to spend thirty thirty five thousand dollars on that whole job doing installation. So imagine cutting that down by a quarter. You know. So um, let's let's discuss this for just a okay. second. Those watching this, we've mentioned Prevost. We know that you're an alternative. But what is the base substrate of Prevost? So we pride ourselves on the fact that we're not a compressor company. We're not out here trying to win business by selling you a compressor and tying add-ons. We we are a solutions provider. We provide everything from the compressor to the tool which gives us competitive advantage, which gives distributors like yourself and all you guys out there just competitive advantage because we have a full package, everything to offer you from the from piping to the tool. When it comes to extruded aluminum, there's many things with our product that, that sets us apart. You know, whether it's the quality of the material, the weight of the material, the installation and the quick installation of the material, the fact that our system is a fully aluminum system compared to some of the competition that's out there which has composite fittings, which for lack of a better term is a plastic fitting, or ones that specifically have 
zero or minimal certifications and approvals in the industry. And, you know, let's be honest, a lot of those situations might not matter to some of those guys that, that you're talking to. But for you guys to know and for the air power and people that are out there to know that you have you have you're equipped with a a product that has all these things that can fit in and you can actually go out and tackle and not only improve on bad systems like galvanized and stain and and cast iron but you can also compete with stainless steel and copper based on our certifications and approvals and now our ISO rating that puts us at the leader of fluid quality so there's a lot of benefits to us. I mean, I can go into a full-on sales fit, um, sales bill if we want, but I don't think it's really needed now. But it, you know, it, it's just a matter of getting people to open their eyes. It always comes back to that, you know. I, I would say, Travis, you know, guys, we, we have access to a lot of equipment in our industry, right? As the size distributor we are, we we chose Prevost based on the quality of their substrate, the quality of their pipe, the quality of their fittings is top notch. Their O-ring seals are fantastic, right? So yeah. it's basically it's it's quality materials that's going to provide little to no. So they're trouble. truly standing behind the product. They truly are. Absolutely, the installed yeah. product. All right. So now that we've been talking a little bit about it, there's certain things that I kind of want to brag about with the Prevost, but I'm not going to because I'm going to let y'all do it. Because I'm sure you'll <laughs> okay. cover it. Um, I touched on it a little bit earlier. But let's, you have uh, some of the piping yeah. and fittings yeah, and man. whatnot. Um, yeah, man. So we so. can we can hand it around. It's very, very simplistic, but very complicated, uh, making it easy for you to install. You guys kind of, you know, show us, let's just do a show and tell minute here. Okay. How about that? Yeah, no problem. So I see a blue and a white and a green. Can you tell me the difference of the well, different that's piping? that's great. That's great. Is it gray? Yeah, okay. On those glasses. It's reflecting off <laughs> of this right here. <laughs> no. That light. <laughs> it looks white. I'm just messing with it. Yeah, so so we offer our piping both in compressed or all three in compressed air, vacuum, and not in inert gas. So okay. basically nitrogen, non explosive gases. Now what's So the that difference? that's basically telling somebody to plant, be really careful with this one. That's exactly right. <laughs> well well it's 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 not it, it's, and it's, it's coated. That's exactly yeah. right. So you know, to answer the question, no, we don't do uh, natural gas. Gotcha. Okay. question asked a thousand times. And all of these pipes, you know, these these colors are what they call industry standard. There's not an actual standard. So I have customers who don't like the blue in their facility, and they want gray for compressed air. You absolutely can. Yep. So, so compressed air, vacuum. vacuum. Yes, sir. And generally not even. Generally not your inner okay. gases, yeah. yeah. So we'll put maybe some bullets up, so make sure you guys know Absolutely. the three different colors and what they are. All right. So those are the those are the piping. Yeah. And then we have all kinds of fittings. Yeah. And what I really liked about this was it takes some of that old school, time consuming uh, threading and. Uh, yeah, absolutely. It, it takes yeah. a lot of that, and having to having to do that for every single connection, every single angle. That's right. You guys got really smart, really fast on your technology. So, so our system is a fully aluminum system, like we mentioned earlier, which kind of speaks to the zero leak capabilities of what we do. Um, inside each fitting, when you take it apart, you'll find a double low nitrile seal, okay. which you know, without talking about the competition, all competition is a single loop. It's kind of sets us apart here um, during installation you don't even have to take these unit these fittings apart I mean all you have to do is loosen it up to it's a certain point and like Rusty said Amen. right there you loosen it up the most important thing with our product and we talk about it all the time and if I've ever worked with you or ever talked to you guys on the phone the most important thing is it's so simple and easy it just has to be done the product and the pipe has to be cut straight and chamfered into burn because the quality of this edge is the integrity of that of the seal mm -hmm. exactly of the seal. quick simple three to five second twist here means all the world in the system but to your point our product is shipped in 20 foot sticks and 13 and a half foot sticks and what you have in that the middle there weird. 13 and a half yeah, well we're, we're a french owned company it's, it's meters it's, it's yeah. meters yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 so uh, but 
in essence, it allows you to work in smaller facilities. Some places don't need, you know, the, the, the piping is priced all the same. It's just cut and, and stocked in different lengths. But um, one of the things that's beneficial to us, and we continue to talk about the, the, the time and labor savings when it comes to this, is the fact that with galvanized, with Schedule 40, or with stainless and welded copper, when you're doing that, putting a facility in and you're piping that facility up, you need to know where every piece of equipment's gonna be. You know, you need to know where you're cutting pipe, where you're threading pipe, where you're installing a T, or where you're cutting and welding a T. With our system, it allows you to install that full loop or whatever that's there, and then you come back, and what we have is a tapping flange, which we've, we've talked about. Um, it's often imitated, never duplicated. Um, but this fitting allows you to basically install that header 20 foot sticks at a time and then it allows you either the end user or the customer if it's a new build once they eventually get into the facility and get equipment exactly where they want yeah. you can come back in and tap that piece on and it is there you guys have a great video on yeah. your website about we that do. yeah and uh we can link it here you know, too you put put the the what do you what would you call this the it's the tapping the tapping drop point. yeah here's and your, here's your you, loose one you turn it up what, what is it you Turn it all the way over, <laughs> you drill in, and then it drops so, over. Yeah, I can that exposes. It right so here. you would put it on your pipe, and you would mark your lines here. There's two lines on the side. You make a dot. Once you figure out where your drop goes, you take it off, you flip it back around, line up your lines to your dots. They sell the drill bit, you drill a hole, yeah. you come back, you deburr the hole. Your O-ring will line up on the on the hole you just drilled. You spun it around, lock it in, and lock it in, and then she's ready to go. Yeah, you just completed your drop. It, so it's, it's so pretty simple. foolproof. Yeah, I was I was very that was the first thing that really caught my eye watching that demonstration over yeah. in the Chattanooga office was how simple that was to do. Yeah, and I mean you look at a normal. I mean, what would you say uh, a galvanized line? To put a, a drop in a non-existing drop location, your time investment, just from time alone. Oh, it's, it's hours, I would think, you know? And most people don't realize, I've, I've had this come up multiple times, where folks will say, well, why don't you just unscrew that pipe? Yeah. That's it, that's not possible with black iron pipe. You can't just unscrew one fitting, unless there's a union there. You don't have access, so it has to be cut, it has to be threaded, a T has to be installed, a union has to be installed. Possibly multiple cut. Potentially give you the space. Yes, probably multiple cuts. And, and if you then, make yeah. a mistake and you cut it too short or too long, then guess what? You're buying. You're yeah, buying no, no one's, one's made a pipe stretcher line. yet. <laughs> yeah. No one's made a pipe stretcher. So I mean, so you're you're, you're putting good. in uh, your two and two clean cuts, which means you got to thread and thread, then add your union, yep. and then to add your drop, mm -hmm. thread again, yeah, right. thread again. Just the threading alone. Yeah. And the time, you know, going through that just to do a drop when all you have to do is use the quick connect, turn it over, mark your lines, turn it back, drill the hole, deburr it, connect it. Yeah. There it goes. And yeah. literally. Yeah, the pre most you can run your entire header, come back, you can pull a line, drop a plumb, bob, whatever you need to do, make your mark, and you know your drop will be 100% accurate. Yep. And done That's in cool. a fraction of the time. Yeah, it's neat. Um, anything else you want to show and tell? Just Not really. I mean, okay. we're talking about all these materials. Just to give a quick example, and I think we'll throw a slide up at some point, but like, you know, for instance, right now, where we're at price-wise, we're pretty close to black iron and galvanized material cost. We're 30 to 40% less on installation time. Um, and the quality of those two materials are not comparable mm -hmm. um, based on corrosion resistance, based on leak proofability, based on weight. So it's kind of a no-brainer. When it comes to copper and well, and stainless, I mean, copper, we're, we're, it, 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 we're probably 60% cheaper material-wise. Yep. And then it's the same same with installation. We're 30, 40% quicker. Yeah. So it, you know, when it comes to those materials, it, you, know, you find end users or people that want to specifically use a certain product, just ask why, why? Why are you so adamant about that? Because we have a solution. Yeah, I'd like to chime in and say, you know, a lot of folks see the tubing, they see the O-rings, they see the couplers, they get a little nervous. They're used to NPT, yeah. National Pipe Thread, right? And I think the beauty of Prevost is that while, yes, we can 
do ball valves and tees and drops and nineties and everything using your pipe and your couplers. You can also easily tap to an NPT drop, right? You can easily have a manifold at the bottom that terminates with NPT. You have NPT here, right? Absolutely. multiple sizes. So while it's new and different, it's still very similar to what they're familiar with. It absolutely at the point is. Of view, right? And it has, and you have the flexibility with our system to do both. And the fact that you can tap into anything. A customer might not want to rip his piping system no. out, no. but he wants to add some drops. We can absolutely do that. It's just an NPT to NPT connection. And the beauty of it, I, I tell customers all the time, you know, you on a weekend downtime, you get a maintenance guy to give me a ball valve, I can run preloads anywhere you want. All I need is an MPT ball valve, and I will adapt to Prevost, and I will run it wherever you need it in the facility. And I can do it while you still run the facility. You can't do that necessarily with Black Iron, right? You're going to have to schedule it for downtime. Someone's going to have to cut into that. The system's going to have to be down. You're going to waste all the air you've compressed. Yeah. Right. If you give me a ball valve, I can go from there. Yeah. You know, one thing that I do want to say is that when I first saw that case open up, at the facility that I was first exposed to this. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know if it was aluminum, steel, plastic. Try you just don't try, know. Try taking it through the airport. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, that it's very important for everybody to, you know, to understand that, you know, the aluminum extrusion, the aluminum piping um, is going to hold up to anything yeah. that you need it to hold up to. There are other brands, manufacturers out there that, that advertise a whole lot higher PSL rating, um, but you'd be not smart to run in those situations. But our system is actually tested up, <laughs> rigorous system, uh, a rigor, rigorous testing, and it's like, I mean, you're looking at like handling up to 1,500 So your working pressure is 285, burst pressure Absolutely. is much, much higher. Much, much higher. Yeah. And our system, when it's tested, is also tested as a full system. It's not just tested as a stick of pipe and, and, then the a, and then a fitting. It's tested as pipe and fittings, which is key when it comes to getting in with an engineer or somebody who's com trying to compare you to somebody else. Um, and it's it's, it's and nice. To I would agree with the fact that your fittings are aluminum and not composite, aka plastic. Uh, absolutely, it goes. It right. goes absolutely. All goes hand in hand. Yeah. I didn't realize you had this all on the table. This is that actual drill bit that yes, it is. Rusty was referring to. It's the exact size needed. Actually, so it goes so it's slots in, right in the so it's in layer for drilling your pipe. It's an extruding aluminum drill bit. So the build mm -hmm. is designed to when you drill it in, it pulls the aluminum shards out. Yep. And it's also got a shoulder there, so when you put it in there, Rusty, you'll yep. notice that it doesn't it doesn't allow you to drill through the other side. You can't. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a dummy proof. proof. That's it's exactly good for proof. people like me. There you go. That's why I had you, buddy. <laughs> yeah. Um, so uh, it I, goes to show, and I'm sorry to interrupt, but it goes no, to, fine. you don't have to be a pipe fitter to install free No. Your maintenance crew can do it. Air power can do it. We do it all the time. Um, your your production employees potentially could do it. You know, if you if you need it done, it's it's not difficult. We well, I've heard this referred to when they refer to uh, Prevost is like it's kind of like Legos. Yeah. You know, if you've ever dealt with an integral, you know, design for Legos or whatever, you could do this. I mean, it's well, there, there's a little bit more to it, it is. for it's, sure. It's just it's you know, I mean. You, but it's our, that mindset. Our, absolutely, our product has, it gives you the ability to get creative on how you run piping and getting in intricate spots. And, and oftentimes when you're coming in, you're dealing with, you're dealing with scaffolding, you're dealing with I-beams, you're dealing with HVAC duct work, you're dealing with electrical conduit that you've got to go around. Um, it's a pain in the butt having to do all that in stainless and welding it. Mm -hmm. Imagine galvanized threading and cutting pipe having to get all around this stuff. And this is just, again, it just, it, it makes the labor and install time. Just, yeah. just I mean, air it. power is getting really good in a Prevost line, Prevost yeah. system. Um, and I know we have it in our assemble lab, the tool lab. Uh, we have a full, um, what do they call that? Dog the full header. Or whatever. Yeah, it's a full, full loop. Yeah. And we've got the full loop there with drops wherever we need them in there. If we needed another drop today, we could probably have it in in minutes. Yeah, yeah. that's the beauty. You know. It's modular, it's flexible, it's easily upgradable. Right? And As your facility it. grows and expands. And completely sealed. And yeah. you're about to have it throughout this whole facility. Yeah. Yep. 
Which oh yeah, with awesome. the we just every moved. move, every all those four rooms. We yeah. had to move at the same time that the uh, the move crew. That's right. Had to had to come down from uh, a top of the hill. Yeah. Mm-hmm. We were booted as well. <laughs> Uh, but we both worked out with much better than we had before. Oh, it's going to be great. Yeah. Um, let's talk about this. No matter what you do here, no matter how good this is, you this still doesn't create the air. It is not. It, no, the air right. is being fed into this. You're only as strong and, as your weakest link. And you're only as yeah, you're only as good as that air source. Now. Okay. What I will say is that if you do have moisture and oils being injected into this line, you know, headed out in your drops, everybody has to have the ability to be able to clean that air through that line so that when it's coming out to whatever, your tool, your powder gun, your liquid spray gun, whatever, whatever it's feeding, um, it's got to be clean, dry air. Yep. Otherwise, it's going to cost you a lot of money. So um, let's talk about the problems with the dirty air. Uh, okay. Let's talk about what we do to combat that yep. uh, from the Prevost angle. Um, so let's talk about the type of filtering that's available. Yeah. So just just to your point, um, your your own you know air quality through this is only going to be as good as the air quality that's put into it. Yep. So it's critical to have obviously every compressor that you buy is going to produce a different air quality based on the humidity and the atmosphere that it's sitting in, where it's sitting in a facility, yep. whatever. Um, and dryers are great. Everybody, you know, wants to you know, install a dryer, but it's critical to even protect that equipment. Um, so it's critical based on each specific application to have the right amount of filtration that you specifically need for that application. For instance, dry, uh, I mentioned dryers are great, but like, think about it this way. Um, there's a reason that washing machines have a spin cycle because you're not just throwing sopping wet clothes into a dryer. If you threw it sopping wet, that dryer would take three hours to dry that versus a spin cycle cleans the air as much as possible. That's kind of my first point is in a lot of situations you have a compressor and a dryer, but why not put a water separator in there and try to get as much moisture out of that compressed air as you can before you send it to the dryer. Makes the dryer more efficient. Absolutely. I mean, you want to protect that equipment. A dryer, I, I don't exactly know how much a dryer costs, but I, I, I can imagine they're not cheap. They're not cheap, depending on no. size. And, 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 and getting them right now is, is another <laughs> aspect. So, you know, it, you know we, t- we talk about pre-filtration, post-filtration, um, and it really all depends on the actual application. So in a body shop, you might not need all this filtration. I mean, you need some, but you don't need to add a micro air sometimes. You don't necessarily need coalescing. You don't need all of these different things. Um, so you've got to kind of manipulate it toward what you actually need. Um, and a lot of dryers and a lot of compressors, they sell their own filtration now. A lot of times you have to buy their own filtration to get the warranty for those pieces, which makes total sense. But what are you actually buying? And is that filter, is it five micron, is it 10 micron? Well, that's great, they're selling you that, they're, they're requiring you to get that, but we need it to down to 0.01 mil, uh, micron, or we need to really filter it down. So there's multiple different styles of filtration that you can use, and right now we're talking about really compressor room filtration, but like, you get farther down the line, you get, we've gotta discuss, there's a whole nother world of point of use filtration, fil- filters, filter regulators, filter regulator lubricators, all of those things to, you know, just a final fail safe to make sure that whatever that air is, cl- that make sure that air is really clean going right into that piece of equipment. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we hear a lot, Travis, well, I have a filter, I have a dryer, and it's in the compressor room, 300 yards away across the facility. Oh yeah. The piping coming out of the compressor room runs over a foundry or runs underground to the paint shop, and all of these different uh, applications and all of these different situations create different points of condensation Heat, and things cool, yes so yeah. no dryer is going to be 100 percent efficient and as that air moves across the facility by the time it gets to the point of use we have gotten moisture you know that is condensed in the line we also have the corrosion from the black iron because the moisture has been in the line so we have to protect our equipment at the point of use right whether yep. that's an impact gun or a robot yep and prevost can help us with that as well 
you know, I, I, I know, uh, you know, guns like the Gima powder coating gun. Yeah. It has a fail safe on it, you know, like a little a little filter on the line, on it. When you're plugging the air into it, it's protecting itself with having a little air a little filter. And uh, I remember Eddie. We talked about Eddie a little while ago. Eddie and I one time were troubleshooting, and we actually took the gun in for repairs. And when they opened it up, the stepper motors that were in that mm-hmm. unit, <laughs> oil was just everywhere. Yeah. It's like you, you can only get away with it for a short bit, and then it's over. Yeah. And that's a at the time that was a five thousand dollar gun, you yeah. know. And uh, the the customer's like, well, you know, uh, it's under warranty. I'm like, it's not under warranty for you yeah. to fill it up with oil. Absolutely. And water. It, it goes back. To that's your responsibility. You yeah, know, that's to, right. that small little filter uh, on the back of that gaming unit. It's will be only as efficient as it can be. Right? That's right. And the cleaner right. the air is on the front side. It's not better, heavy duty. It is not. The better it can do its job. Right. Its job is not to prevent right. everything. It's yeah. just a last line of defense. Yeah. Right. So it can only withstand so much. So, you know, we've talked a lot about this. I know we've got notes we're trying to follow. We've talked about a lot. We've moved yeah. it around. Um, let's get down to some things that I, I know we probably want to um, to touch on. But okay. One of those uh, that I think is very important and very important for the person, persons that are watching this is the cost of compressed air. Yeah. You know, people don't think about it at all. Like if you're, if you just get a job at a plant, you go in and you're doing whatever, putting parts on the line, taking parts off, or you're, you might, whatever your job is, your thought has nothing to do with compressed air. Yeah, compressed air is one of the most expensive it is uh, items in a plant yep. that's used, or utility if you want to call it that, it is or a form of energy. Uh, yeah, a resource. It's one of the most expensive resources in a plant. I want to touch on that a little bit, and then figure out, kind of drill that down into why Prevost protects you there. Yeah. So just to your point, um, it, it is probably one of, if not the most expensive um, forms of fluid power um, or forms of energy. However, it can be used very, very efficiently if in fact you set up an efficient system, a clean air system, a system with minimal leaks. And people don't, it goes back to what we said earlier, you've got a, a, a place that a guy's not really thinking about and, and doesn't really care about the, the, the return on investment or the loss of money if all of his pieces of equipment are running. But you know, it's hard to kind of quantify sometimes how much a leak is. And I get it asked all the time, so how can I explain to a, what a leak is? So just to give you a couple examples, and I've got some notes. Um, a compressed air leak of one CFM costs an average of $150 to $210 annually, okay? Well, what's one CFM? I mean, we, we understand what it is technically. Um, to break it down a little bit, a one CFM leak is approximately 14 to 18 decibels, so it's extremely quiet. If anything is running, if a printer is running, you can't hear it. Okay, just as an example, a whisper is 30 decibels, so think about that. Okay. Um, if it's a leak that you can hear, it's exponentially larger than one CFM. It's three, four, five, fifteen, wh- whatever it could be. You know, it's a it's a massive leak, and it's just those dollars continue to grow. And it's just, it's sometimes it's very hard to, to explain that to people. Um, there's different ways to really kind of look at um, how, to, how to associate those and how to figure out what the cost loss and, and wasted energy is. Um, a pretty general and average number is, on average, a manufacturer has approximately 30 to 35% energy waste from air leaks. And inefficiencies. Well, if you think about it, if you've got a compressor yeah. that's feeding that compressed air to the source, the only time that compressor then kicks on again is if you've depleted fresh air out of, or depre- depleted compressed air off the end that you're utilizing. 100%. It, and then it gets down to the to the mid max level or whatever, yeah. and it kicks back on and it's right. going to run until it gets that pressure built back up. So every time you hear that kicking on, yeah. Uh, is typically when somebody's been using the compressed air. 
So a good trigger point in your plant to think about is if nobody's doing anything to necessarily use the compressed air and that sucker keeps turning mm -hmm. on during the day, 100%. you're losing the air somewhere. Yeah. And, and you, you've jumped right into uh, another point and, and we can talk about it um, and we were going to get down to it a little bit is, is, is how, do we, how do we do that? How do, we, how do we figure out? How do we go into a customer's facility and show or prove to him, hey, you're wasting money and here's how much money you're wasting. And what you're talking about is what we call a duty cycle test. A what? So a, a duty cycle <laughs> test. D-U-T-Y. Duty cycle test. Um, you I think you got to once a day. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. Here we go. No, so, the, the, and, and we'll pop a slide up to explain it a little bit, but we'll also give you some more information on it because I know these calculations can get kind of carried away. But what it is, is it's basically a test run on your compressor with zero air production or zero usage going on through the facility. Okay. So you do it after hours. And what it is, is it's a measurement of, you shut every piece of equipment off that's running your system except for your compressor. You leave the compressor on and you, you, you time and count compressor runs, which they call loaded value, which is basically, you pick a period of time. So let's say 60 minutes. And of those 60 minutes, that compressor runs 10 minutes. And it doesn't run for 50 minutes, okay? So then you combine those two, um, and the formula that we give you is basically based on what compressor size that you have. So you take, it's basically, you divide the loaded time by the full duration, which is the loaded versus unloaded time, which is when it's running and not running. And you divide that and you multiply it by um, the horsepower, the compressor horsepower size, and that'll give you an estimated CFM leakage. And then you've really just got to compare that CFM leakage to actual, the cost of the cost of um, power or kilowatts mm -hmm. at a certain time. We'll put that up so everybody yep. can see yeah. it. We'll put up that, yeah. that equation. Yeah. Right, cool. I've actually seen applications out in the field where you know facilities have uh, redundancy, right? So there's multiple compressors running in this facility. And I've seen applications where we fix the leaks, we, we put Prevost in, and they're able to actually shut down an entire compressor. Yeah, wow. Which is a massive savings. Yeah. Right? Because oh, they did yeah. not realize just what was being. They thought they couldn't the keep atmosphere. up with the, the need for the compressed air, <laughs> yeah. but what they were is they were losing it. They, they were not keeping up with their losses, not necessarily wow. keeping up with production. They were not keeping up with just their to, losses. Just to, to your point, it's a key when you walk into a facility. Just Just listen. Just listen. Yeah. You know, like here, listen for the air leaks. You can hear them. If you can't hear them, you're not hearing much. If you hear that compressor constantly running, now if there's equipment that's running constantly and that compressor is constantly running, then guess what? They've probably got an undersized compressor. Yep. But if there's not much going on and that compressor is constantly running, just listen and mention it to the guy. Hey, how often? I think that compressor's running the whole time we've been in here. How often does it run? Well, it's running pretty much all day. Well, we need to talk because you're throwing the money away. And then when he tells you how big his compressor is, if he says, well, it's been running all day, it's a three horsepower compressor. Well, you know, you can quantify that versus a 50 or 100 horsepower compressor, depending on what it is. I mean, you're talking about thousands upon thousands of dollars being thrown out the, the window. And it all, it, all, it all trends kind of in the same direction. The, the larger the compressor, the larger the savings. Mm -hmm. yeah. And in turn, the return on investment for investing in a new system or investing in just a leak fix and fixing the, the trouble points, like finding where those leaks are and replacing them with new fittings or replacing them with new quick couplings, you know, or, or if, you've got, if you've got 30 drops and every one of them has flexible hose on it and every elbow or every neck where the band is on the flexible hose is leaking, put new hoses on there. It's a 25 to $30 investment right now it's going to make it work better and you're going to get that money back in three to five months on return right. on investment because mm -hmm. you know and that machine and whatever's going into that is is not not debris or not being starved you yeah know? it's more efficient absolutely yeah. and that could be a 25 to 30 bucks investment per drop right so your roi your savings could be multiplied per drop over oh, the, yeah over the whole facility so it really adds up quickly 
Did we want to did we want to go through the bullet points on detecting a leak? Or we um, kind of did that. Well, we can. I mean, there's multiple different ways. Um, you know, obviously the sound test um, and detecting leak. You you kind of you kind of if you want to pinpoint and do a leak audit. So there's ways to do leak audits. There's equipment out there. UE Systems makes some leak audit equipment. Um, some um, some meters and stuff like that. And 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 you know those those that equipment has an investment to it to buy it. Um, yeah. But in, in turn, if you want to do it easy, like go and listen and feel and, and follow your sound. And when you get to an area, just like a soap bottle of bubbles, yeah, old like school. spray it on a mm-hmm. thing and check and you're checking for leaks. If that's what it takes to prove to that guy how bad of a leak he's got, if he can heal it, fear it, or hear it and feel it, then you can go back to some of these CFM ratings that I'm talking about. Like if he can hear that leak, then you know it's one and a half to two CFM plus. And then you can kind of quantify that. Hey, you know, that leak we can hear and feel. That leak right there is costing you $220 to $350 a year, that specific leak. That one right there. How many of those do you think you got in the facility? We got 25 more. Do the math. It's easy and, math. Oh, yeah. I mean, but again, it's it's just it's a matter of, of, of finding somebody that's willing to listen and willing to walk around with you and willing to look at, look at them like you're looking at me like, Yep. You know, understand. You're understanding. I can you're save taking it all in. <laughs> exactly. Um, it's usually that maintenance guy who's struggling at this time of year when we're getting into hot humidity time of summer. That's, right. that's struggling with his compressors keeping up. Yeah. Struggling with maintenance downtime yeah. on his compressors. That guy will listen. Oh yeah. Because right. right. we're going to make his life easier, and we're going to make right. the entire facility run better. Yeah. One point that I want to bring up when you bring that when you talk about that is we don't. You know, we want Air Power and your sales team to be experts at it. Um, we know that you're not. We know that you've got a lot of different things to be experts at it. That's why Prevost prides themselves with our regional guys to come out, work with you guys, work with Rusty, walk a facility and do a layout. But at the same time, if Rusty calls and says, hey, I've got this customer and he's got a lot of leaks, I need to, we need to go talk to him. That's what we do. We come out, we'll help, we'll walk through the facility with you. We'll point out these leaks. We'll quantify this stuff. We'll, we have the ability to help you guys out, show your end user or your customer how we can how we can assist because we can solve these problems. Again, from the compressor all the way to the tool, we can fix it and we can provide a solution for it. So, cool. All right. Anything else anybody wants to tag on back into this? I don't think Before so. We man. close up. That it's was been a, fun. That was a good, good podcast, time. man. That was great material. I appreciate you letting me come in here. Dude. Thank you very much, TJ. Good job in here. Thank, you, Thank you, Rusty. Yep. My man. Appreciate, Appreciate you. you. Yep. All right. So to close out, 1-800-334-1001 if you have any questions. Uh, if you want more information about Prevost, I would encourage you to go to the airpower-usa.com page, just our homepage for Airpower. And on the top of that page, you'll see a button for brands. Things, resources or brands and uh, you click on that you're going to see the top brands that are offered through air power and one of those buttons is these guys right here Sweet. click on that and there's good information there uh, and uh, again if you have an account manager with air power you can call them or, or just call that 800 number 800 number and uh, just tell them hey i need some help with the prevost uh, system so, airpowerairwaves.com is where you can watch this podcast. If you are listening to it on any of our podcast channels, uh, uh, you can go to that go to that website, click uh, listen to the or click on this episode to be able to watch the episode where we are actually handling some of the Prevos piping and the fittings and whatnot. So. All right, social media, YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. Uh, and coming and soon, maybe Snapchat TikTok. and TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, TikTok, we'll, we'll see about that. Uh, it has a lot to do with the man who helps me film all these, that's for sure. I guess the problem is you got to feed the animal. That's right. If you start the TikTok animal or the Snapchat animal, you gotta animal, keep it coming. You gotta keep it going, otherwise it dies on the vine, literally. So, 
All right, so uh, I guess if you're watching this and you want to hear it in your car or whatever, remember Apple, Pandora, Spotify, Stitcher, Apple, all of those podcasts. If you're in podcast land, you can find us. Look up Air Power Manufacturing Solutions or Air Power Airwaves. All right, so I'm going to close this out by saying what I say every time we end a podcast and manufacture it a great day. Thank you for joining the Air Power Airwaves podcast. Air Power Airwaves is a production of Air Power Inc. and Air Power Live Studios and is hosted by Travis Steyerwall. For more information, please visit airpowerairwaves.com. For more information on all of our products, brands, and manufacturing solutions, please visit airpower-usa.com. If you have any questions or need product support, please contact Air Power at 1-800-334-1001.